and a man. I want to look first of all this morning in the scripture found in the book of Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5 is scripture that we have no doubt in my mind read very often as it pertains uh, to relationships between a husband and a wife. We see here in the word of the Lord, the scripture says in verse number uh, 21 of Ephesians chapter 5, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, verse 22, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Verse 24 says, Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, unto Christ, so let the wives uh, be, uh, be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives uh, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 28, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Uh, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. As we begin to look at this verse of Scripture today, I'm sure that we could spend the rest of this morning and several days just talking about these verses of Scripture. And as we begin to look at this this evening, or this morning rather, I know that each of us, as you begin to look at this, we begin to read the Scripture where it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, and wives, submitting yourselves to your own Husbands, as unto the Lord. We begin to look at this word submission. And I know men, and I know how men are, and I know how that sometimes we like to stroke our ego just a little bit. And, and we like to look at that word submission and submit uh, as a power word and as an authority word. But yet in the, the whole act of the word submission there is exactly what it means. It's a submission word. It's one where that one is capable or able to humble themselves uh, before another. And you think about the word submission, and you think about a relationship, and you think about how the relationships flow, and, and how that the Bible is talking more about the man becoming the head of the family, the leader of the family. And likewise, as the man becomes the leader of the family, it is his, his role to lead. We find the next thing there. As the Bible teaches us, the word that the wife is to submit to his godly leadership. She is to follow him. He is to set that example. He is to set the pace for the family. And the wife, the children, the next thing in Ephesians 6 talks about children. Obey your parents. Why? Because your parents uh, are in a role of authority. They're in a role of, of leadership. And all of this moves down to, 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 to the fact that, that we're to work together and flow together. And it talks about submission. But I looked the word submission up. And I looked it up uh, in the uh, 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 Greek and Hebrew. And we see, excuse me, in the Greek. And it means uh, actually submit, which means to place under something. So yes, a wife is to look to her husband. And she is made according to the scripture as the weaker vessel. But it does not mean that she is weak. And I believe it takes a strong woman to fall under submission to a godly man. And allow that man to lead her into a godly relationship as unto the Lord. We look again to this word submission. And the word submission actually means, and I feel God up in here today. And we look to this word submit, and it talks about dependent position. And it is, it is a wonderful thing to know that my wife is dependent upon me. And I have the duty and the responsibility to lead my wife into a godly relationship. And I got the responsibility to lead my family in the direction that God would have me to lead that direction to. It is never a position of ego. It is never a position for a man 
person when I don't understand their language? How do I understand them when I don't hear what they're saying to me? One preacher done a series of messages, and, and part of this was, teach me how to love you. A lot of times we understand of how that we, as in a relationship with husbands and wives, that we don't speak the same language. And we got to understand of how that in our society today we use the word love. I love potatoes. I love hot dogs. I love Brody, my dog. But yet in the same term, we say, I love my wife. I love my mama. And if you think about the word love in, in that context, and it is extremely hard sometimes to understand how love really correlates in a relationship. A husband may feel that if he is bringing home the check, so to speak, as I mentioned last week, that that, that to him alone, to him, uh, that is a way of showing what, uh, love to his wife. But yet, it seems like that she is empty inside. She is lonely inside. And, and, and she is hurting inside. But yet, she, to him, uh, he feels like that he's doing all and everything he can do to express love to his wife. But she has no idea what he's even talking about. And you think about it on the flip side of the coin. A man comes home and, and he's lonely, he's desperate, he's empty. She's washing the clothes, she's keeping the house, she's keeping the table filled with the victuals, if you will. She's doing other matrimonial responsibilities, if you will. But yet on the inside, he's hurting. He's lonely, he's miserable. And the reason is that emotionally they are not speaking the same language. And, and she is speaking something totally different from what... Uh, she is speaking something totally different, or he is rather, to what she understands. And, and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do here. We talked about last week, and we'll get back into it in just a little bit, in a few moments. But we talked about last week about quality time, and we're going to get into that again. But, but I wanted to just list five these five love languages for you on the board so that... Hopefully you'll be able to glean from them and maybe even write them down if they'll help you. And I think they're going to put them up there. But we see, if we see this, of how that physiologically each of us have what is known as a love tank. That when your spouse speaks to you, it adds merit or it makes deposits into your life. And it makes you feel good about who you are in your relationship with your spouse. Well, there's five different things that we're going to try our best to talk about today, and I'm not going to keep you a long time this morning, and if I don't get through it tonight, I just know i got to get through these between now and whenever, and I'm not going to get in a great big hurry, and I'm not going to quit until I feel like the Lord said okay, okay? So we look at the first thing on the board this morning, and we look at words of affirmation. How is words of affirmation actually understood. What is words of affirmation? What is affirmation? We think about affirmation, and watch this, it, it, is, it is understood and, and put in definition to declare or state positively or, concern, or to confirm. It is to give assurance or confidence or encouragement. And I'm going to break it down, I'm going I'm to make it real plain, and I'm going to make it real simple. If your spouse never hears words of, of affirmation, if you never encourage your spouse, and if their love language is words of affirmation, you are never doing anything to add value to your love relationship emotionally with your spouse. In other words, as uh, we've seen the example, one, maybe she would turn to you, and, and I'm very... Uh, generic in the term she, he, they, we. I'm going to just throw it out there this morning and I'm not trying to say just the women or just the men. But for an example, if she says something like this, it's about time you take the trash out. I was wondering when you was going to do it. Or better yet, let it stay there until the flies carry it out. That is not a very affirming word to your spouse when you think about the language of affirmation if that's the term that your spouse hears, uh, hears love in. It is a love language. It is so much better to say something like, sweetie, I'm so thankful that you carried the trash out. I really love it when you do that. And in that, it boosts the, it boosts the love language of that person. 
Pastor. I cannot define what your love language is. It would take a lot of work. It would take a process to do that. I don't have the skills or knowledge or ability to be able to do that. But I will say this. I believe if every family begins to do this, I believe if every family begins to adjust in relationship, in communication, even our children have a love language. If we begin to understand more about this particular topic, I firmly believe that our homes can change and in a very short period of time. We see again this, this, uh, the, the, the affirming words uh, when I say that many couples have never learned the tremendous power of speaking verbal affirming words to each other. Verbal compliments or words uh, of appreciation are powerful communicators of love. And even, even in, in the Word, the, the Bible, the Word of God, where it talks about a soft word or a kind word will turn away wrath. Of how that Solomon talked about a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and, and pictures of silver. How that I have as a pastor shared that so many times uh, of how that word's fitly spoken. Why? Because it allows us to affirm one another's existence. The very being of another human being that I'm emotionally attached to, that I am in love with, and I am affirming by the words of my mouth. I wonder why the Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord. We ask ourselves, how long has it been since you told your spouse? Guys, I'm trying to help you here. That she's beautiful. Amen. How long has it been since you have spoken words of affirmation to your spouse and told your spouse, you know what, you're the best cook I know. How long has it been since you've actually told your spouse that he, she, you're the best housekeeper that I know? And, and later I'm going to get into something that's absolutely going to just rock your world. I can't do it this morning though. But she has done a wonderful job with the children. Have you told her words that encourage her? It's the words that, that tear her down and, and words that bring healing and, and not words that bring pain. Why would you do this, Pastor? Is it manipulation? Why, certainly not. It is you learning a dialect in your wife's language uh, that is going to add value to your relationship, friend. I plan on staying with my wife till the day that I die and, and, and whoever goes first. But if I spend the rest of my life speaking a foreign tongue to her, she will have no idea. We will, know, we will not be able to communicate in our relationship. The next thing we look at before we move on to the next one. I believe that we can turn this to the other way. If your husband's love language is affirming words. Again, wife, how long has it been since you spoke affirming words over him? How long has it been since he's heard you brag about how good he's doing? What kind of provider he is? The example that Gary Chapman puts in his book is simply this. How long has, you, how long has it been since you've just seen him writing out checks or writing out bills and, and, and writing out the light bill, so to speak, and you just simply walking up to him and just patting him on the back. And I'm going to use Brother Steve, just patting him on the back and just saying, you know what, I really appreciate things that you're doing for me and for our home. You say, well, will that really work? It'll work if his love language is affirming words. Number two. We look at the next one. I'm going to skip over a little bit just to get a couple of these in this morning. But we look at the next thing is this. The next love language that possibly could be spoken by your spouse is quality time. And I mentioned this just real, real fast and real, real brief last week. If your husband's time, if your husband's love language or if your wife's love language is quality time, Quality time is really defined as you giving your spouse, and it's real simple, 100% your undivided attention. Where that your spouse is not competing with ABC, NBC, CBS, or anything else, and ESPN, and all of these other things, that, all of these other things that See, here's the problem. We say we spend time with our spouse. In all reality, 
each other. Oh, what I didn't tell you is this man and this woman were. 
church. They both work. Uh, they have a beautiful home, a beautiful house. Uh, he, 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 he comes home in the afternoon. He helps her fix dinner. He mows the yard. He goes into the basement. He does all the things that a good husband needs to do. He comes home or gets finished with that. He gets in his chair. He turns on the TV. He sleeps to bedtime. They go to bed. She said, this is the routine. We've been married 35 years, and this is the routine that we've been in for 35 years. It's so routine. And she says, I am so empty on the inside. The story went on to say where that this man sews his own buttons on his britches. This man starts dinner and all of that before she ever gets home because she gets home later. And the story talks about how that they sat there and Dr. Chapman looks at her and says, what is it that you want from him? And she says, I want him to sit down and talk to me. And it's like, all of a sudden, for 35 years, they've not communicated. For 35 years, they've not talked. So the man in return looks back at her and says, is that all you want? <laughs> you mean to tell me we drove three hours, we spent the money to come here, and we done everything that you want, and really all you want is 20 minutes of my time? She said, well, you always do this and you always do that. And, 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 and all this time he was doing all of these things and it was not even phasing her love language. So on the flip side of that coin, and I'll conclude with it in just a second. On the flip side of that coin, he, through the communication process, it's like, well, what do you want her to do for you? And he said, I would love it if she would cook dinner sometimes. I would love it if she would sew the buttons on my pants sometimes. I would love it if she done just certain little things. And then these, these, these fireworks went off. She said, I can do that for you, but the reason I've never done it for you is because you're always doing it and you never give me a chance to. It's not that she didn't want to do it. <laughs> he just didn't let her do it. So therefore, the moral of that story is simply this. His love language, and we'll get into it, was acts of service. He understood his wife's love by the things that she could do for him. But see, he thought all the time, she was speaking his love language, and they didn't know anything about the love language part, but but, but all the time, their, their marriage was empty because they didn't know how to communicate. So guess what? This man, Don, if you will, made a commitment to his wife, she, and he said, Honey, as long as I live, I promise you, I'll give you 20 minutes of my time for the rest of my life, every day. They left there, I wish I'd known the rest of that story and seen how that later on it worked out. But he did say that nine months later there was a follow-up visit. And guess what? They were doing absolutely wonderful. Why are you doing this preaching? Because I love you. Oh, I used that word, didn't I? But you won't never know that I love you unless I'm speaking your language or we're, we're communicating on levels that we understand. There's three more things that we're going to try to get to. Uh, there's gifts and, and, and acts of service and there's, there's uh, physical touch. Those are the three things that I'm going to try my best to just buzz right on through tonight. And then hopefully you can buy your book and understand. You say, well, how does this, how does this happen in a relationship when you've been married for 60 years? I'm going to tell you something, friend. It'll work no matter how old you are. Because I guarantee you, when you're 60, 70 year old, you're still going to be wanting to have a relationship with your wife and your spouse. <coughs> Amen? Amen? So it'll work. You say, why did you become a believer in 
this. I have done this type of sharing for many, many years. I've just not exposed myself too much here at the church as far as marriage stuff. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I love it. Why? I don't know. I just do it. I just, it's just, just who I am. Because I believe in families and I believe in people. And I believe in relationships. And I believe that you can work together. But you got to know how to talk to each other and communicate. Stay the day. It's a couple minutes after 12.